Hi everyone. Welcome again to our series on basic mechanics. And into our channel, making life easier. Kindly subscribe, share, and like as well. Today we are looking at equilibrium of rigid bodies, example two. Let's look at our question and how to solve it. The beam below is supported by a pin at A and a rocker at B. Determine the reactions at A and B. Good. So let's see how to solve. I had already said that anytime you are given a question in equilibrium, the first thing you need to do is to draw a free body diagram. So in this question, let's draw a free body diagram. The free body diagram will look like this. I have a pin at M. So if it's a pin, we know that it will restrict motion in the X, so this will be MX. And it's also restrict motion in the Y, so this will be MY. And then the force here is 60. 60 kilonewtons. And we are told that the distance is from this to that is 3.5. And the distance from this point to that point is 3 meters. And we are told that there's a rocker inclined here. This is a rocker inclined at, at 30 degrees. The rocker is inclined at 30 degrees. It means that it means that if this is our 30 degrees to the horizontal, and if this is our vertical, then it means that now you see that this rocker will allow you to move or slide on this axis, but it will not allow you to move in this direction. So it means that it will restrict motion in this direction. And don't forget that it is inclined at an angle of 56. So our angle here, the vertical will also be 36, 36 degrees, 36 degrees. So once you have been able to draw a free body diagram, what you need to do is to resolve the force here. The force for the rocker. So this is N. So let's take it that this one is N. So if this is N, then we can resolve that force to the S component and the Y component. Look at the direction. So it's starting from here and then ending at that point. Therefore, if you want to move from this point to that point, we are going to start from here. We move this direction on our X and this direction on our Y. So it means that now X, we are going in the negative direction. Don't forget that our axes are always like this. This is positive for X, negative, positive for Y, negative so you are going the negative direction of our x if our f of x will be negative you are going to get f of x because but look at the angle the angle is facing the s side you can see that the angle is facing the s the angle is facing the x side of our axis. This is our x side. So in that case, we can see that our f of x will be n sine 36. And our f of y will be equal to, don't forget that we said that it's negative because it will be moving in the opposite of our direction. But y will be moving up. 
why we remove nap. So this is going to be pen cos. You can see that y is adjacent to the angle. So n cos 36. Good. So from here, we can decide, always we said that we take moment at a point which will eliminate most of the forces. We take moment at a point which will eliminate most of the forces. So here we can take moment at point M. Taking moment at point M. Taking moment at M. So when you decide to take moment at M, we are going to get that 60 times perpendicular distance from the 60 to M, which is 8.5. And we ask ourselves whether it to be clockwise or anti-clockwise. We have a perpendicular distance like this, and then the force is like that. We can see that the 60 will rotate the object. This point is fixed. It will take the object this direction, which is clockwise. So this is going to be negative. And if that is negative plus, yes. So we have the, the S component. You see here, just as we resolve, let me be clear on that. And then we can all see what I mean by that. Here, we said that the force there is resolved into X and Y. So this is our Y axis. So our Y force will be pointing. And then we have our force which is inclined at an angle of 30. And the X component will be in this direction. So you can see that now, F of X and F of Y. You can see that our X component is exactly on the point where we are taking a moment. It is in line with the point if you are taking a moment. So there will not be any moment for this X component. But this Y component is a perpendicular distance. You can see that it is acting down like this. And because it is in Y, the perpendicular distance will be in X. So we are going to get Fy, and we know that Fy is N consistent. So N consistent times 36. We are, that one will be moving up. We'll be moving up in that direction. We'll be equal to we'll be equal to and all that we have here is just all that we have here is just our force in the y n force 36. But the perpendicular distance from the y to where we are taking the moment to be 8.5 plus three, which will be 11.5, so times 11.5. And from here, we said that sum of moments is equal to zero. So sum of moments at M will be equal to zero. And then from there, we can make our N the subject. So N will be equal to 510 over 9.10, then we can see that n is equal to 54.8 newtons. Then we can determine the reactions at x and y. So at x, you can also see that sum of f s is equal to zero. When s is moving in this direction, is positive. So we are going to get mx plus we only have two horizontal components, this one and the one here. And they are all moving in the positive direction, so they are positive. Therefore, MH plus MH plus 32. So from here, now we can get FS sign 36 because you know that N is 54.8. So you can see that Fx will be negative 54.8 times sine 36 is equal to zero. 
is equal to zero. So from there, you can say that MX will be equal to 32.2 kilo newtons. 32.2 kilo newtons. So we have gotten MX. Now we are just left with MY. We are left with MY. So similarly, we can see that sum of f of y equals to zero. And this time one is y is moving up to be positive. So we are going to get so we are going to get my. This is coming down, so it's going to be negative minus 60, but you can see that my is going up minus 60 plus 54.8 will be equal to zero. And from here, our my will be equal to 5.2. So the only difficult question is the first part of this question is to resolve this force here into component. Is to resolve the force here into component, which we are saying that if you make an angle with the y and an angle with the x, and the x will move because this is going this direction, this force will move up and the one here also move like that. But, so this brings us to the end of this question. It was very simple. Kindly put through, but if you have any question, just let us know. Just let us know if you have any question, any comment, or any suggestion, you can let us know. So once again, thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Bye-bye.